We're going to begin this video with a review of um, DNA, what DNA is made up of, and just nucleic acids in general. Something that you probably looked at in the first half of biology, which depending on when you're hearing this video, could have been trimester one or trimester two. So just a review of nucleic acids in general. First of all, they are made up of what we call monomers. Monomers are small units. And the monomer for a nucleic acid is called a nucleotide. And a nucleotide is made up of three smaller pieces. And you can see those here. So we have a what we call a nitrogen base. And the nitrogen base could be one of several different nitrogen bases. We'll actually talk about those on the next two slides. We can also have a sugar. And notice that it's a five carbon sugar. One, two, three, four, and five. So we call it a five carbon sugar. And depending on the type of nucleic acid, you could either have deoxyribose or ribose for your sugar. And then lastly, we have this phosphate group. So those are the three pieces that make up every nucleotide. Now the nitrogen bases, we just mentioned that there's a, a variety of nitrogen bases. Uh, they're divided up into two categories and the categories are based off of their size. So we have what we call a pyrimidine. Now a pyrimidine is the smaller of the two and we call them one ring. If you look at the examples up here, you're gonna notice they're kind of ring shaped where they close on themselves. So this is this ring shape here, and there's only one ring. You'll see in an, a future picture, um, ones that are just a little bit larger and are actually two rings bonded together. So these first three are the smaller ones. We have uh, cytosine. You'll see that abbreviated with a C as we get into different DNA examples. We have thymine, which is abbreviated with a T. And then we're also going to be using what we call uracil. Uracil is only found in RNA, uh, but it's one that we'll be working with as well. Now the other type of nitrogen base is called purines. Purines are two rings. They're a little bit larger. And so you can see here the two rings bonded together, so they are bigger. And we have adenine, which we abbreviate with an A, and guanine, which we abbreviate with a G. So those are the nitrogen bases that we mentioned. That's part of what makes up a nucleotide. And then we also have sugars. Now the sugar for deoxyribose and for ribose are pretty similar. Um, I just want you to notice the spot that they're different is right there and it's highlighted. The reason this is called deoxyribose is because it is missing that oxygen here that is on the ribose. Um, so that's where the deoxyribose comes in. And that is what the sugar name is for DNA. That's what DNA stands for, deoxyribose nucleic acid. And then RNA, is its name is based off of its sugar ribose. So we have ribonucleic acid for RNA. Now, nucleic acids have what we call a backbone. And if we're looking specifically at uh, DNA, the backbone is a, is a ladder, so there's two sides. In RNA, there's only one. But in general, nucleic acids that have a backbone, and um, that would be the sides of your ladder. So if we draw kind of a DNA up here, and it's not a flat ladder, but just to keep things simple right now, you're going to have a sugar and a phosphate, and a sugar and a phosphate and a sugar and a phosphate and that goes the same on both sides so it is just constantly uh, repetitive repeats itself over and over and over again now the middle of the backbone or the rungs of our ladder this is where you're going to see your nitrogen bases so this is where you're going to have those A's uh, adenine and guanine and cytosine and so on are going to be here in the middle on those uh, ladder rungs so that's the middle of your of your uh, ladder there for DNA. And here we have a much better picture. This would be your sugar. There's the five carbons, one, two, three, four, five carbon sugar. And it's got a phosphate, and then you have another sugar, a phosphate, sugar, phosphate, on both sides. So it's constantly repeating. 
and then your nitrogen bases you have in the middle. I want you to notice that you always have a two-ringed nitrogen base with a single ring nitrogen base and there are these bonds holding the halves of the ladder together and those are hydrogen bonds. If anything were to break and cut those hydrogen bonds then this half of the ladder would fall over to the left and this one to the right. So um, we want those hydrogen bonds to stay connected uh, unless we need to um, make copies of our DNA which we'll talk about and then those hydrogen bonds will break. Just um, to kind of wrap up here just a little bit more about DNA, there are two scientists, you probably have heard of them, James Watson and Francis Crick. These two scientists are given credit for coming up with the shape of DNA, which is a double helix. Now they did have some help, don't get me wrong, but the double helix is the two backbones, so again that's the double-sided ladder, and that's again the sugars and the phosphates back and forth along the sides and the nitrogen bases in the middle held together by those hydrogen bonds. Now this is incredibly important. This rule is called the base pairing rule and it says that adenine as a nitrogen base only ever pairs with thymine as a nitrogen base. So adenine and thymine are partners. Cytosine and guanine are partners. You will never have G pairing with A. Okay, That does not happen. You only have A with T and C and G pairing together. So because of that base pairing rule we know that the sides of our ladder are complementary meaning that we can predict the other half of the ladder if we know one side we can figure out the other side. So for example, let's say that we had our DNA ladder, and sometimes people like to see it like this. Let's say that your DNA ladder with your sugars and phosphates, you have your nitrogen bases in the middle, and that's A, G, G, T, C, C, G. And that's your DNA half over here. Now your other half of DNA also has DN or, sorry, nitrogen bases that are going to bond with those. So this is where our base pairing rule comes in and again that rule is A and T are a partnership, G and C are a partnership. So whenever you have an A then we automatically know that there is a T on the other side. So I'm going to switch colors here just so that we can see that. So if you have A that means the other half of the ladder is a T G, the other half is a C, another G, so we have another C. Now T on this side still pairs with A. A and T are partners regardless of which one comes first. C and G pair together. And then lastly another G with a C. So if you were asked to come up with the other half of the DNA or if you were asked to come up with the complement strand of DNA, it is asking you to come up with what does the nitrogen base given, what does it pair with on the other side? So if you haven't already written down the answer, make sure that you do that. Make sure that you have that in your notes.